Today I want to take a look at the git process commandlet, which enumerates the active running processes on the local machine. So if we come down and check things out, we have a few examples all the way up to 10. And looking at the commandlet itself, there's, you know, mainly people will run this as git process with no parameters, but there are additional switches we can add to kind of refine our results. And we'll walk through those one example at a time. Our first example will invoke the git process commandlet with no parameters at all, simply to echo back the available running processes on the local machine. You'll see a number of columns coming in by default. Most important, and the process name over here to the right. We have a number of other attributes about CPU, memory, the ID. Process ID is going to be key for anything like stop, start, kind of closing or handling them. And then handles kind of shows about the number of threads, and then there's some things for hardware usage. The second example is going to be to get two specific processes by name. And we'll go ahead and launch Microsoft Word so that we have a matching set for that. And clear the console, highlight the code we want. Now this is interesting. If I highlight the left side, I get the data as a table. If I do format list star, I get a lot of detail coming back. So part of the example two is that we're adding pipe format list star as a way of learning everything that's available on the get process return type. That yes, get process will locate these running and tell us a little bit about their hardware usage. But when we format as list, we get all kinds of rich detail. What is the path of the process that it began? a lot of different things about the working set, even the version number of the file that's running. There are times that might be helpful. So a lot of rich detail that's available and format list will provide that in a way that lets us learn more about the available data. When we do the short return type, we're getting summary only, format list, full detail. Example three, get all processes with a working set greater than a specific size. So we're looking for large processes consuming a high amount of memory. And that narrows our results somewhat. Not surprising, Chrome is on the list. If we look for a specific process into a variable, that can kind of take a snapshot of everything on the machine at a given point in time. And we can do view priority. Now, this goes to some of the earlier PowerShell uh, recordings I've done, where dash view is a certain way of looking at the data, that it's grouping by priority class, and it has a certain sort to it as well. And adding view priority essentially gives us that way of formatting the results. Moving into example number four, list all processes in groups based on priority. We just executed that one. And here we're going to add a property to the standard output display, for example, five. So we are going to format it as a table, but we're going to add in all of these extra labels. And they have expressions, which are calculated columns. And these calculated columns are going to divide by 1024, divide by a full megabyte, do string formatting, a lot of different formatting of the data to make it easier to so in executing example five, we do have data coming back. And go ahead and clear this out. Yes. All right, F8 to execute the highlighted. There we go. So we're executing the highlighted block. We have a number of custom columns. And we're kind of bringing in a little bit of divide by 1024 makes the numbers easier to manage. Uh, we can see the process name here, which was part of the original commandlet for filtering. But basically, we're adding in our own columns to make these easier to read by bringing them down to uh, smaller number sizes. We want megabytes, not kilobytes. We want you know, something that's more summary level. So if you are, and this goes for any PowerShell command really, if you are piping it to format table and you want to add your own columns, you can do that with a label and an expression and then provide the formula for how to evaluate the custom column. Next, we're going to do file version info. I think this one's great as far as like patching, security, and updates. A process is running, 
which one is it? Is it the new one, the old one, which version? You know, a lot of people will run git process, learn the file name, and then go do a right click in Explorer to try to learn what the version is. It's actually a lot easier if you just add dash file version info. And so it comes back telling you everything it knows about the file version. Saves you some time. You don't have to go right click. You can actually get the detail right here. Next, we're going to do get modules loaded with a specific process. So this command uses the module parameter to get modules that have been loaded by this process. So we'll give this a, a run. This will tell us a little bit about SQL. And I don't really have anything running with the SQL commandlets at the moment, so it's not showing. So for this example, I'm going to edit the expression just a little bit to be ss star. And let's see, we'll go ahead and run it now. And I'll see SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS, is up and running. So there's a few things we can do there. And it tells us about available modules. So it's an interesting command. I don't personally see myself. So it's an interesting command, but don't see as much usage for it. So we'll go ahead and switch back over to example eight, finding the owners of a process. So here we want to include the username so that we get back details. We'll execute example eight and we'll do this one here. Include username requires elevation. So I did not run as admin. Let's fix that. All right, so I did a right click run as admin. Now we see PowerShell coming back as administrator. And back into our example, we'll execute. We can see the username of who's running the local PowerShell process. That's cool. And of course, we can do get process without that. Come back for a single specific thread that we're looking for. We'll come down here. Yes. Use an automatic variable to identify the process hosting the current session. That's $PID. This command shows how to use the $PID automatic variable to identify the process hosting the current PowerShell session. So that's, that's an interesting one, right? Because if you want to do something with your PowerShell host session, it's a really good way of learning the current running session. So we'll go ahead and execute that. And it came back with ISE, which is interesting because we are an ISE. But if we take that exact same command over to the latest PowerShell version 7.2, we get something totally different. We get PWSH, and that's different than ISE. And both of these are get process dash ID dollar PID. And that is an, a dynamic variable for our current host session. So if you need to do anything with your PowerShell host, this is a really good way to auto detect it. Works on cross platform and with ISE. Our final example we'll take a look at, example number 10. Get all processes that have a main window title and display them in a table. So this is going to be requiring the property main window title and then format as a table. We'll go ahead and execute that final example. And we have results coming back, number of different sessions, and they all have a main window title. So it's a way of kind of filtering things down and removing background sessions. This really focuses on things in the foreground. So that covers all 10 examples for git process. A very simple command, honestly, I usually run it as just git process by itself and then filter the results but including things, going through the examples to learn more, what properties are available. We can add our own calculated columns. We can do file version info for security, patching, and updates. And we can also have a way of detecting the current host session that's cross-platform with $PID. So that concludes the Git process commandlet. Thanks for watching.